Good morning, Hawaii, Vancouver, Seattle. Good afternoon to those of you a little further east. Maybe we're talking New York City, Boston, maybe somewhere in the New Haven area. And uh, good evening to those of you that are just starting your evening out in Europe, in the UK, in France, in Germany, Austria, Italy, wherever you may be. Even if you're in uh, the east, the far, far east, Japan, South Korea, Thailand, the Philippines, welcome to episode number 84. Yes, 84, the 404 arrow code. Don't you guys just hate that when you're working on the computer and you have the 404 error code on a web page or something show up? Yeah. And so I thought, hey, today is April the 4th. It kind of fits right in with how I'm feeling with OOTP right now. You got the OOTP blues? Is there just not enough time in the day to do everything you want to with OOTP, which again is is a good thing and it's also a bad thing. There's so many things that we can do with OOTP now in terms of gameplay, the franchise, the historical play, the fictional leagues, and then bring in Perfect Team and soon the live component of Perfect Team where it's kind of like a fantasy roster that you set to earn perfect points or whatever, whatever they give out as prizes, just going to eat up more time of the day. So I don't know how you guys are feeling, but for me, it definitely seems a little bit like I've got the OOTP blues because I don't have 28 hours in the day. Because believe me, if we had more time in the day, I would be putting more time (laughs) into OOTP. How is everyone doing? I see Hero Driver in the house. I see Heath DG in the house with the weather. Cubs fan, Steve, good to see you back here. Hope things are well for you in Florida. And a few others that I've seen in the chat too. Fanatic, good to see you. Welcome back there, Fanatic. And Chalua Papa Pants. Chalua Papa Pants. (laughs) Welcome to the stream as well. One question right on the bat that I have for you guys is how many of you are new to OOTP with this version of the game? If you're new to OOTP 24, put it in the chat. If you've been playing this for less than, you know, two months, let's find out how many new users that we have to the game or at least new users to perfect team. Even if you're just new to perfect team this year in the last month or so, Put it in the chat. I'm kind of curious how many vets we have compared to how many new users. So yeah, if you're new, just down there, put playing for three weeks or playing for two weeks or haven't bought the game, but I've come across these streams and I'm very curious about the game. So put that in the chat there, guys. Uh, Let's see what kind of mix we have today. Brynick, welcome. Brynick, 1107. Good to see you again. Big Chief, Big Chief 888, welcome to the channel. You just started two days ago. Well, you're in for quite the ride, my friend. You are in for quite the experience. Uh, I'm not sure if you're playing Perfect Team or the franchise part of the game or if you've played OOTP in the past, but welcome. Welcome to the experience. If, if, OOTP had a ride at Disney World, it would be a very popular ride because a lot of people are starting to get into the game, I've noticed, in the last few weeks. So yes, episode number 84, there just doesn't seem to be enough time in the day. Again, if you are new to the channel, and I notice a few, let me go uh, Let me go shout these out, even though I put a lot of them on stream here. Thank you to B. Mahler who followed me at the end of stream yesterday. If you're in the chat, B. Mahler, thank you. And Bafusilier, Bafusiller, thank you. D.B. Berg, too. I've seen that name before, maybe in league play or in tournaments, but it seems like a very familiar name. Thank you, D.B. Berg, too. 19 Butcher. Well, we have a 39 Cobra, and now we have a 19 Butcher. Heaney or Hanny Fan, and Jester 
Star Stask, Jester Stask. Thank you for the recent follow too. You guys, this is a great community. If you're new to OOTP, you've come to a wonderful group of people. So many people that will help you out in the Discord, in these uh, streams that you come across. If you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. No question is a dumb question. That's what I tell my students when I'm, you know, teaching. There is no such thing as a bad question. Unless you're doing it on purpose, then yeah, th th there can be kind of silly questions. But if you're new to OOTP and Perfect Team, we have the best community out there. We have the best affiliate streamers willing to help you out. And like I said, there's just not enough time in the day once you become fully immersed. So welcome. I stream Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And if you haven't bought the game yet, well, you can easily go to OOTP Developments and their website as I do a little bit of a, a pitch for them. And uh, you can purchase the game. I'm in Canadian dollars, so I have the Canadian aspect. But you can go through and you can buy it on Steam. You can buy it on for the desktop. Uh, through Fast Spring Checkout. Very easy to do. You can also go and uh, let me just put this exact website in here so you don't have to hunt around for it. You can also use this same web page to go and buy perfect points. You can buy them within the game itself, or you can buy it right here, including the big PP package. And for me, it's pretty expensive $700 Canadian. Ouch, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of PP, but that's a lot of loonies. And if you're from Canada, you know what I'm talking about. That is a little bit of uh, toonies and loonies coverage that I don't have right now. But hey, if, if you have the disposable income to do that, to get the big PP, then uh, go ahead and do that. So you can do that all on that website that I gave you there. Or you can purchase the points within the uh, app itself or it within the game. And because I am one of the affiliates, whoop, where did that go? I am allowed to offer viewers a 10% discount. So yes, you can use my discount. OOTP24 for a license. Thank you, Bailey, for pointing that out. If you use my code, you can save on the game. And then that money that you save on the game you can get PP. Yes, you can get the PP with all that 10% that you save. So thank you to OOTP Developments for providing me with the code to continue to offer the game at a discount for that 10% off. And uh, just something nice, something that nice that they do. Every once in a while, OOTP gives us these sales and these discounts uh, for the game or for packs or for perfect points. So it's good to have. Also, where are you guys? How come you're not on the lap discord? Discord, a great place, a small little community where we share information. We uh, post screenshots. For example, I posted my rainbow pack. If you're new to OOTP, a rainbow pack is where you have one of all six levels of cards. So you have your iron, your bronze, your silver, your gold, your diamond, and your perfect card. Very rare. It's, it's like seeing Bigfoot in the wild. Very rare will you see the rainbow uh, set up when you open up a pack. So not only was I happy that I got a perfect card, which ended up being live Jacob de Grom, but... I looked at it and go, hey, I've got one of every single level. That's pretty cool. So on the Discord, that's where we kind of share information and talk about, you know, tournament play and what's working for us and what's not working for us. And, um, yeah, it uh, is a good place to kind of hang out. Like I said, just a small community. Um, go ahead and join the Discord if you want. If you have room and more time in your day, I'd love to have you over there. Again, streaming Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays. We take a three-minute break about an hour into the show. So there's a couple three-minute breaks. Refill the coffee time. By the way, today, still working on my gingerbread and hazelnut blend with half and half creamer, butterscotch, 
coffee syrup. And today I've got some mint coffee cream. Yes, from the good old folks at uh, the coffee creamer, whatever that company is. Don't can't remember it offhand. I think in Canada it's Nestle's or something. There's a couple of them. But that is the coffee flavor of the day. And you'll notice halfway through, it says tournaments postponed. I used to host tournaments on the streams, the 16-man perfect draft, where we'd have some competition and friendly rivalries. And they may be coming back. They may be coming back, those 16-team tournaments. I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers that those tournaments come back and we can start playing in those again. Also, I do a giveaway on every stream. If you're new to my stream, uh, do the giveaway 15 packs at the end of the stream. Two of you will win. One will win 10 packs. One of you will win five packs, providing stream elements works, of course. And it's been a little bit glitchy. And maybe that's because, you know, I have a planned Babe in the Matrix series coming out either next week or the week after. I'm going to time this with another big announcement that I hope to share with you on a stream next week. Yes, another big for you guys, big for for, for myself and uh, those connected with the game. So that will will come out. Uh, talk about that a little bit more next week. And again, Thursday, the card report, the Hawk report, where we talk about the new cards whether they're playable, whether they're good, whether they're not so good. So right after Dish streams on Thursday at noon, he comes on and then you guys can check out the after show uh, where cards will be discussed and we will look at all the new cards. Remember, you get drops from watching affiliates, maximum five per day, and you get drops from watching the official channel. So if you don't follow OOTP developments on Twitch, go do that today so that you get notifications when they're live. And Rich Grisham has been on a lot in the evenings. I believe he announced yesterday he is going to be streaming Sunday night and Monday night. So that's 10 extra packs that you can get by watching Rich on Sunday and Monday. And not only does Rich do that, man, this guy... This guy is multi-purpose. He is everywhere. He is part of the community. He is part of the game development. He plays the guitar, and he also puts out a wonderful podcast, OOTP Now. Rich Grisham, not a new new episode since March the 9th, um, but uh, yeah, should be coming out with a new episode. You can download them, play them in the car on your way home from work, and Mr. Audit, Thankfully, we have the video on demand. Can't catch it live, unfortunately, but you can always, you know, go back to the archive there. And I think it stays up for like two weeks or three weeks. So catch it on the way home from work if you have nothing else to listen to. All right. What else am I missing here? Uh, Gorgo. Good to see you, Gorgo. Again, Gorgo, uh, if you are new. And a couple of you did mention that you are new to the game. Gorgo is one of the affiliate streamers. He is on Wednesdays, Saturdays, Sundays. Go check out his stream. Uh, great, great affiliate streamer. Great cook from what I hear. And uh, great with uh, some good old stories about the game and about the Cincinnati area. So go check out Gorgo if you haven't followed him yet. He is close to a thousand followers. Get Gorgo to a thousand ASAP. So good to see you, Gorgo. Yesterday you won six tournaments for 18 packs. Yeah, that is uh that's pretty pretty cool. It, it's hard to grind packs this early in the game. There's so much competition. So I did see in one tournament I was in with you that the Finney Town Flames did win that tournament. That was like, I think, yesterday. So that must have been one of the one that you're talking about. Uh, what else do we got going on here? Um, Andy, Andy from Sheffield. Andy, did you find a good pub in Scotland? I know you were, were or are in Scotland right now. 
and you're getting cheesed off with these 16 man tournaments. Is that the bronze ones, the iron ones, the gold ones? Because I know they don't have the perfect draft ones yet. Hopefully those will come soon. Yeah, I really want to get back to the tournament play. If you have followed my streams, you know I am a big, big, big fan of the meteorology activity around uh, the world in North America. And in Alberta right now, where I am from, we are just above zero with a little bit of light fog, not, not Scottish fog coming across the moors, but a little bit of fog in Edmonton right now. But we are getting nice and warm. And again, my heart goes out. My, my best thoughts go out to you in the Midwest. If you're from the Midwest, last I heard, today you guys were supposed to get possible severe thunderstorms, possible tornadic activity. I don't know if it's going to make its way up to Ohio, but I also heard a foot of snow coming up towards the Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin kind of area. So Cobra, uh, Vulcan, if you're in the chat, are you getting that severe weather yet? Because I heard Tuesday was the day that the Midwest was going to get some of that uh, awful, awful weather. Andy's not quite in Scotland, Northern England. There's some good pubs that you're trying out. Well, since I have you here, Andy, we got, we got to mark this. I don't have many places marked in Europe right here. So we go to the Google Earth and we go up here to UK. I don't know where the border is with Scotland, but I know it's obviously down here somewhere. There it is, right there, right above the U. And you say you're not quite in Scotland. So are you at Carlisle? Are you in uh, Gretna Green, Hexham? Or in the Newcastle upon Tyne? Sounds like a uh, Lord of the Rings place. Newcastle upon Tyne. That place, Altonwick. Ah, boy, boy, boy. Now you're really... Uh, testing me here with my geography that place. Well, it's easier if I just type it in a a L N U I C K. Oh, Oh, wow. Way, way up to the uh, East, the Northeast. Yeah. Look at, look at this place. Like, well, there's a cemetery. I don't know if that's uh, looks like an old fort that they have there. I mean, of course, the UK, you're going to find a lot of this old architecture. And that's, as a history teacher, I just love finding out about this old architecture. Like, look at that. Look at that castle. If castle stones could talk, right? What would these, what would these stones say about what took place in Altna, Altnawick? however you pronounce. Oh, oh, really? There you go. Harry Potter fans. This is where Harry Potter filmed. I did not know that. Cool. And we got a, uh, it, say it, Anik. Okay, Anik. That, that's pretty, pretty easy there. So Anik is what we have uh, with uh, Andy from Sheffield. For those of you that don't know, Andy, a, a subscriber to the channel from the Sheffield area, featured him uh, earlier in the year and found out they have a video game museum in Sheffield. So we took a, we kind of went off track that day <laughs> and we investigated some of the sights and sounds, or sights anyway, of Sheffield. So that's where you are up in this area, or that's where you were. It's like a community of, what, a couple thousand maybe? Yeah, maybe a couple thousands. Got the Barter Books. We got the White Swan Hotel. The B&B Anik. Homewood. I don't see any Costco's. Where's the Where's the Walmarts? Where's the McDonald's? Oh, there's a McDonald's. Hey, Anik is big enough to have a McDonald's. There we go. Um, The Screwfix Anik. 
Okay, hardware store. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! I'm glad when I clicked on it, it didn't give me something else because I don't know what happens in Attic. I don't know if it's like, hey, hey, what what's said in Attic stays in Attic kind of place. We got the fire station, the Hog's Head Inn. Sounds like a good place. It looks like they have, might have a few good beverages there. And uh, so on. So there you go. There is a, a live update from Andy from Sheffield doing the tour of Northern UK. And we have a perfect draft report from Heath DG's three and three in the finals of the daily perfect draft. Well, that is so cool because not only will you get a good card, I think that might be a, a high diamond choice pack. If I remember correctly, uh, and now you're looking for the reverse sweep. So you were down three, nothing, and now it's tied three, three. And yeah, if you're in tournament play, the leaderboard started yesterday, I believe. So enter as many of those tournaments as you can to get in the perfect team championship series matchups at the end of every month or every couple months. I'm not sure when the cycle starts and ends. Hey, Chalupa Pants says, I've got a Sheffield United jersey hanging in my closet. Well, what a small world, right? Oh, I forgot to mark that place. We're going to mark it. We are going to mark it in Annick. Highly recommended by Andy from Sheffield. Save starred places. There we go. Yes, this is what you get, guys, when you come over to Laptop Hound Stream. You get some geography, you get some weather, and yeah, eventually we get to some OOTP as well. Hero Driver, my air conditioning wouldn't stop running last night. I'm sure there's a Simpson joke in there. I'm sure Bart would have a good comeback with that. It is, uh, it is just above zero here. A lot of castles up there. Blame the Normans for that. Oh, oh, Andy, Andy, we don't want to get into a war here. No war between the Normans and the uh, the English. Although I did teach about the Battle of Hastings. I'm sure you're familiar with that. The Battle of Hastings with William the Conqueror, who before he became known as William the Conqueror, was known by his other name, William the Bastard. And apparently that is kind of a, a common title back in the day in the UK. Um, Self-explanatory, I probably don't need to explain it. But the Battle of Hastings, when William the Conqueror came over from the Franks area, somewhere over here, I guess, and crossed over. And uh, from what I understand, William the Conqueror was uh, not the, the most... Uh, conscientious about his cleanliness. And uh, when he died, he was a huge man that they had to, he was, I think he, he fell off his horse or something like that. There's, there's some good myths and facts about William the Conqueror. But yeah, I had uh, taught about that because I taught some European history. So taught about the, the Battle of Hastings. Apparently his jester got killed, which kind of set off the war from what I understand. But again, not an expert on that battle, but I know a little bit about that area of the world and the history. So we've got Harry Potter and William the Conqueror all with one, one segment. <laughs> well, let's get on to food, right? More important things. Remember yesterday I was talking about the new cookie shop that opened up in Edmonton. Well, it was featured uh, in the headlines of our news, CTV News. People are coming from far and wide. Hundreds line up for Crumble Cookie opening in Edmonton. So I asked you guys, like, is this good? But look at this. Look at this line up here. Here's, here's the cookie crumble over on the right-hand side of the screen. Here's the door. And here is the lineup of people. Fortunately, there's snow. No snow in Edmonton. Look at it. It goes past the value buds. It goes past the pharmacy. It goes past the little restaurant here, past the bistro, all the way to the far left-hand side. And even behind that, it's 
probably back back here somewhere for a cookie for a cookie <laughs> Appropriate comment of the day so far. What was the jester's task? I think to entertain William the Conqueror. But he went a little too far because he started to poke fun at the opposition, at the English, and started to poke fun at them and uh, whatever jesters do, right? And uh, they fired upon him and apparently killed him. And William the Conqueror wasn't too happy about that. So we had the Battle of Hastings. So IBDB says that it's popular, but it's gouge. So we've got gouge territory there. I don't know if this video is going to play. Let's see. All these people with their Canadian parkas on, their coffee in hand, coming in to crumble Canada. Look at that. Look at that size of that cookie. Man, I didn't know they were that big. Even Connor McDavid, one of our all-star hockey players here, gives a shout-out to Cookie Crumble. Even at night, all day, it was lined up. Ah, all for a cookie. There we go. Now we get to see some of those cookies. Okay, I can see. I can see why they're popular. They look like mini cakes. Yeah, there we go. That is uh, that is a little bit about this cookie crumble. Let's see if we've got any more uh, pictures here. Let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. There's a six pack. We've got a box of six. Looks like some raspberry topping and chocolate oatmeal that was recommended yesterday on stream. Someone said you got to try the chocolate chip oatmeal. And then we've got look an Oreo type. And then this, what's this, like a peanut butter with chocolate on it? And then some strawberry kind of covering. There you go. There is the cookie crumble. Haven't tried it yet. I'm not in a rush to try it. I've heard it's like $5 a cookie. So that's like $70 a dozen. Yeah. I think I'd rather invest that in uh, the big PP package rather than buy cookies. I can just go to my local my local store and buy cookies for a lot cheaper. Were they giving the cookies away? I don't know what they were doing there. I uh, I mean I'm sure they had some sort of promotion going on. But but this is crazy. Like people spend their day in a parka lining up for a cookie. This lady just said, you can't hear the sound, but she said she was lined up since 1.30 a.m. in the morning for a cookie. There we go. It looks like they, some proud, happy customers coming out with huge boxes of cookie. That's probably their, you know, monthly paycheck. Look at those size of those boxes. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Got a little off track there, but... Wanted to kind of bring that back up since we were talking about it yesterday. Hey, good point. Chaston Ruin, they look like hockey pucks. We're ingrained in hockey up here. Ooh, an edible hockey puck. I'll pay $5 for that. Only $5? Those upscale cupcakes are $10? Really? $10 for those? I can buy a jar of peanut butter and a dairy milk chocolate bar and just uh, have fun with that. And Marcus Amor, Marcus Amor, sounds very French. Marcus Amor. <laughs> he paid $10 yesterday. Uh, they are delicious. Okay, so you got your $10 worth. Good. Like it's a Nintendo Wii exactly, Heath, right? Like, I can see lining up on Black Friday or Boxing Day in Canada for Nintendo Wii or the newest iPhone, but for a cookie? That's five toonies in Canada for a cookie. <laughs> 
B. Mahler, you know, like a newspaper always has its different sections. You got the sports section, you got the weather section, you got the food section, and you got the entertainment section. Well, that's what my stream is. My stream is the modern day newspaper. We have all these different sections, and currently we're on the food section. Okay, let's move on. I thought you guys would like to know, we talked about days of celebration yesterday. Well, Guys, it is International Carrot Day. International Carrot Day. So go celebrate. Um, let's see what they recommend here. International Carrot Day was established in 2003. There we go. And they even have some nice puns. The International Carrot Day celebrates this root in all of its uses forms, and flavors. How to celebrate International Carrot Day? Eat carrots. What? How do we eat carrots? Jeez, glad it's not International Puppy Day. What the heck? You're supposed to celebrate them. They're telling you to eat carrots or make a carrot cake. Plant some carrots. Throw a carrot party. Come on, honestly, guys, how many of you have thrown a carrot party? I don't want to know. I don't want to know what that party is. There you go. Yeah, tell your wife. It is It is the uh, modern-day newspaper, like I said. What else do we got? Oh, well, something very close and near and dear to many people's hearts, the World Rat Day. Today, April 4th, 4th is World Rat Day. Rat owners can take this day to pamper and love their little friends a little extra. Don't have a rat? Go visit your pet store or local rundown alley. You can probably find one. Or hey, watch Ratatouille. Speaking of food and rats in one sentence. What, am I living in the matrix where we have a world rat day? The many rewards of rats. No one's perfect. And there's no denying that while rats can be pesky and destructive, however, there's many benefits that outweigh the negatives. How to celebrate World Rat Day. What do they say here? Oh, okay. Okay. If you guys own a rat, treat them with their favorite food, give them plenty of cuddles, and even a gift or a new toy. Welcome to Streaming with Laptop. <sighs> okay. Well, World Rat Day, and we've got International Carrot Day. <laughs> oh, I love this one. <laughs> this is my kind of day. National Walk Around Things Day. <laughs> Isn't that every day? Like, seriously, who purposely walks into things? If you, if you purposely walk into things, you're doing this day a dishonor. National Walk Around Things Day. Okay. You can, you can learn all about it. There's a history, apparently, to it. Avoidance in terms of taking a mental break. Okay. So you can mentally walk around things. It's also National Vitamin C Day. It's D.A.R.E. Day. National Chicken Cordon Bleu. Here, go or go. There is your dinner plans for tonight. Tonight, go or go. Chicken Cordon Bleu Day. Get it in the oven. Get the, the ham and the cheese and the uh, breaded chicken. You have to celebrate that today with some carrots. And then tonight, you can snuggle and cuddle your rat. And on the way to snuggling your rat, 
make sure you avoid bumping into things and have some orange juice. You've got them all covered. There you go. All five days covered with one dinner tonight at Gorgo's house. Your chicken tonight will be fried. I was hoping you'd say that, save that Gorgo till fried chicken day, international fried chicken day, but that's probably further down the line. All right, guys, that is, uh, it's time to talk. It's time to talk baseball. Yes, let's talk some baseball. All right, let's look at the chat here. I've been ignoring you guys in the chat. Look at this. We've got Son of Brahms following. Thank you. We've got Jester Jester's Task. I, was it was it the William the Bastard comment and his Jester being killed by the English in the Battle of Hastings? Thank you so much, Jester. We got War of UA. War of UA sounds like a Warhammer kind of name. We've got No No Kaha No Kaha, son of Brahms. I've seen you in other. Uh, streams before. Welcome, son of Brahms. Thank you for the follow. Dyersville Ghosts. Ooh, I like the X Files. That sounds very X File ish. We've got Russ Bus. I like the rhyme there, Russ Bus. We've got Buck Cheeks. I almost said that improperly. I'm glad I caught it before the words came out of my mouth. Buck Cheeks. We've got DC Roscoe, DC Roscoe 1, reminds me of the Duke of Hasker, Hazards and Roscoe P. Cole Train and Boss Hog. Didn't you love that show back in the 70s? Duke's a hazard. And, and, and who didn't have a crush on Daisy Duke, right? Everyone had a crush on Daisy Duke. So welcome, Roscoe. The commish is in the house. Good to see you, commish. If you like fantasy baseball and you want to check out how you can create a player in fantasy baseball, oops, let's try this again. That should work. Follow the commish on his stream. He streams typically in the uh, uh, weekend mornings and then I think uh, one, one or two days a week towards the evening time. But yeah, check out the FKN Kamish with his EMLB league. I hope that's the right Kamish. <laughs> I hope I didn't promote the wrong channel there. And Dr. Obvious 83. Well, perfect day for you, Dr. Obvious, because today is International Avoid Walking Into Things Day. Fits your name. And a big shout out to New subscription, subscription number 24, one, one more away from my goal of 25 to B Mahler. And I have to ask you, B Mahler, did your wife hit the button? Did, did she see the quality value in these streams and say, hey, that's a guy we need to support? So thank you, B Mahler. We've got a special ditty just for you. Hello out there, we're on the air, it's baseball night tonight. The tension grows, Randy Johnson throws, and the ball goes out of sight. B. Mahler jumps, and the players bump, and the Expos fans, they go insane. B. Mahler roars, Vlad Guerrero scores, at the good old baseball game. That's for you, and or your wife, if she uh, pushed the button Hopefully not by mistake. So thank you, B. Mahler, for the subscription. Thank all of you for the follows today as we try to reach a goal of 775 and work our way up this Twitch scale that they like to give us. Beetle Boy 911 welcome to the stream. And B. Mahler, no, but she's going to let me dip my... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop reading it right there, right there. Because you're now a subscriber, you get a little, a little bit more leeway there. So enjoy International Carrot Day and uh, cuddle your rat tonight. I didn't say, no, don't make, don't make the comparison. No. All right, baseball. 
I think that's what I'm affiliated. Oh, yeah, I'm affiliated with baseball. Yesterday, yesterday, we started up a live OOTP baseball franchise, I guess what it is. So let me let me go back to that for a sec. Let me change screens here. Uh, let's go here, present, share screen, go to my gameplay. See if I've won any tournaments. No, we'll talk about tournaments later. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you my bronze tournament and how it's doing because it's it's winning some packs. Maybe not as many packs as Gorgo, but I'm gonna show you what my bronze team looks like a little bit later. We're also gonna do a, a perfect draft. Now that Heath is three and three, Heath, I might have missed the update. Did you win your daily perfect? I know you were tied three three. see here all right so one thing you can do if you've never played ootp base game this is what we did yesterday we went to new standard game we clicked no thanks on the challenge mode we named it april 3rd and then we click this live start button and when you start your game it imports all the statistics from all the games played up until that day. So all the games played yesterday, played on the weekend in real MLB, it imports all the statistics, the home runs, the injuries, everything. AZ, if you're in the chat today, I know you mentioned yesterday you have a special affiliation with a, a company that imports all that information. If you're in the chat, is that something that's going to continue until like right until the end of the major league season? So can we start up this new game with the live in June and August? Will it continue to update all the current stats as of that day? Because that would be extremely cool if we could do that. So let me go back to my other screen. So yesterday, in real life baseball, the Milwaukee Brewers beat the New York Mets 10 to nothing. The Mets had three hits. Brewers had 10 hits. Just before that game started, we simmed the game using that live update that I just showed you. And in our sim game, the Brewers meet uh, the Brewers beat the Mets. Seven to one. The Mets had five hits. Real life, the Mets had three hits and no runs. Either way, the Brewers destroyed them. And it wasn't the exact same score, but that's pretty, pretty cool. And when we set this game up, it already had the, the 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 pitchers that were scheduled to pitch yesterday. The lineups were pretty close. We had to tweak the lineups to get the exact lineups in because you can do that. You can go to the MLB uh, website and go to the lineup area, and you can see the lineups once the managers have uh, released them. So, yeah, that that's pretty cool that we simmed a game, and then a few hours later, the game was played out in real life, and the scores were kind of similar. So get try that out if you want. Set up a new game with April 4th. All the stats will be imported. And uh, play that day's games out. See how it turns out. Hey, FKN. Thank you again for the follow. If you missed it a little earlier... Uh, I did give you a little bit of a shout out here. Let's see if that works again. There it is. The FKN Commissions Twitch site. So thank you for the follow. Go check him out on, uh, I think it's Sunday mornings and uh, in the evening or early evening, some evenings as well. He does a fantasy kind of baseball, like an online baseball and Many OOTP users run the teams and create players and, you know, he has little contests on his streams and yeah, it's a fun, fun stream. Uh, check him out if you're new to OOTP. There you go. There's his scheduled times right there in the chat. 
coffee break. Okay, well, let's check out the, uh, the the game scores today. Let's see what's going on in Major League Baseball. Uh, where is it? Right here. Just had it. And I don't know if there's any games that have started yet. Ooh, the Dodgers had their way with the Rockies yesterday. How did my Blue Jays do? Congratulations, Wildcat Bandit. Your Astros came one run short. That sucks. Uh, the Blue Jays lost to the Royals 9-5. to I think they're 1-3 on the season now. And today, the first game starts up in a couple hours. The Arizona Diamondbacks up against the San Diego Pirates, or Padres. Also yesterday, I simmed out the entire season, and the Mariners are projected to win the World Series over the Cardinals. So we're going to do that once a week. We're going to pick a game of the day. We're going to set the lineups to the exact lineup of the real game. We're going to play it out. We're going to sim the whole season. And we're going to keep track. We're going to keep OOTP accountable. So far, big thumbs up. OOTP did well with that first game that we tested out. Ophi, yeah, the Blue Jays pitching staff has been terrible. Yeah, hopefully they'll get on a little bit of a run because I'm picking them to to win the AL East. Yes. Yeah, that's a bold prediction. I think they have improved this year. All right, let's go to the game. And I am going to start the game up here. I'm going to go to my Rocky Mountain Gladiators, kind of show you how they are. They're in rookie right now. Entry pool last season, rookie this season. <laughs> IB, yeah, you, you missed that yesterday. The Mariners won the World Series in four games over the St. Louis Cardinals. So if OOTP calculations are correct, you might have a very, very enjoyable October in the Seattle area. Kamish, you are 24 and 10. Well, let's see how the Gladiators are doing. You're 24 and 10 in rookie. I am. Sorry, Kamish. <laughs> Sorry to one up you on this one here, buddy. <laughs> the Rocky Mountain Gladiators are 25 and 10. <laughs> oh, that was, that was, that was synchronicity there that was good timing but you've got you've got one game in hand so hey maybe maybe you'll even it up so yeah off to a very good rookie start here guys we do have our first big ad break coming up we're going to get into the game we're going to look at tournaments we're going to do a draft be back in three minutes go fill up your beverage go to the washroom go cuddle your rat international rat day we'll be back soon All right, welcome back in after that extended break. Yeah, I used to have my breaks every uh, 30 minutes and and uh, often I would talk over them and not even notice they were coming up. So I decided to have a longer break, an hour into the show and then one towards the end of the stream. Just again, gives me a chance to recoup a little bit and uh, get my voice back on and uh, get the game ready. So here we are. We are into the gameplay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you to all the new follows today that I shouted out earlier. Uh, and Dr. Obvious 83 being the newest one. And uh, thanks to the subscribers, too, for continuing to follow me along this path that we know as OOTP. Welcome in to Dr. Dynastic. Dr. Dynastic is in the house. He will be the recipient of my raid a little bit later. So make sure you click on that link and you follow him. And uh, he's got some really good content. Another Seattle fan, loves his music, loves his concerts, and loves the franchise part of the game starting to get into perfect team a little bit from what i've seen on his streams but 
definitely a big OOTP fan and a new affiliate. So you can get your drops. If you don't quite get them all with me, you can follow me over as we uh, say hi to him in about an hour's time. All right, let's continue on. So if you missed the first hour, if you missed the first hour, we didn't talk a lot about OOTP. <laughs> we, we, we covered a lot of other things going on in the world. Some really important things going on in the world, like International Carrot Day and International Rat Day. And, and we looked at crumble cookies in Edmonton. And we looked at the weather and we looked at where Harry Potter was filmed. Okay? It's not always about OOTP. Sometimes we need a mental break from OOTP. Today is date zero, uh, 404. Well, Kurzov, funny you mention that. Funny you mention that, Kurzov, because if you missed the first part of the stream, when I mentioned what episode it was, it's episode 84, April 4th. Got the OOTP blues with not enough time in the day? Yeah. I feel like I don't have enough time in the day. I want 48-hour days so I can refine my OOTP because I haven't had a lot of time to play around with my team. And they're doing okay, but it's only rookie league. So thanks, OOTP, for taking up most of my day on April 4th. All right, Gladiators, we are 25 and 10. And I just love the logo over there. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brag a little bit because I'm in rookie and rookie really, it's rookie. But look at all those gladiator logos there. We are we are knocking it out of the park with our batting leaders, except the St. Pete Mad, Mad Hatters, 16 and 17, they have the most stolen bases. So I'm, I'm not a very fast team. So I got to improve on the speed. And pitching, we're, uh, we're only in one of the pitching. We're second in strikeouts. Leaderboard, we've got Alvarez, a live, is it a live? Yeah, it's a live 98 diamond. He's second in the rookie league in war, 1.6 war. So if you want a card that's going to help you out in the lower leagues, this guy's hitting 396. 396. New players, live cards will only get you so far, at least in previous versions of Perfect Team. We don't know if it's been changed this year, but typically you're going to gravitate towards the historical cards, uh, like your Mr. Pip here is going to probably do better than a live 65 card lower leagues though it's it's a mishmash sometimes you'll get live cards doing really well like this guy here mr thompson trace thompson is a silver 77 live card and he's got the best war rate now at 1.7 once you start getting to probably bronze leagues silver leagues those live cards tend to fall off and even your perfect live cards don't perform well when you get up to the higher levels. But I'm just in rookie. So any card is fair game right here. All right. What else do we got going on? Yeah, I do. Dr. Dynastic, I do. Like, I wanted to make sure you had more time for gameplay. So I thought I'm going to sacrifice some of my stream time for the world headlines of the day. Like there might be other things going on in the world. I don't know, financially, politically, I mean, I, there might be one or two things going on, but it's International Rat Day. Can you get more important than that? All right, let's go to uh, the team here. Here is my batting lineup. Uh, again, we're just kind of chilling out in rookie, trying to get perfect points. I've got 10,000 perfect points. I am a PT Plus member because I do see the value in that, at least for now. You get double login rewards, so you get double the packs every day when you log in. You get the extra tournament slots, the multipliers. You save on your purchases of perfect points. So for me, it's about $8.99 Canadian. 
And uh, we'll see. We'll see if I continue to see the benefits as time goes on. One thing is new players, I recommend that you do once in a while is go check out your transaction history. If you go up to market, transaction history, here is where everything is recorded. You got a database of all your recent transactions. Did you buy a card on the card shop? Did you sell a card on the card shop? Did you win a tournament? Did you get uh, free packs from a giveaway? If you ever get free packs from a giveaway, it will say custom event over here. It won't show you how many packs that you received. It'll just say custom event. Uh, if you get achievements from gameplay, it's obviously marked achievements. Got card from a buy order. Okay, I purchased George Earnshaw. And uh, packs from a tournament. Let's take a look at the last couple days. Three standard packs from a tournament. Gold pack from a tournament. Three standard packs from a tournament. Uh, one standard pack from a tournament. Twitch drops from watching Twitch streams. Three packs from a tournament. Three packs from a tournament. So yeah, I've, I've done okay in tournaments. So when you look at my total packs, I have 111. These are all from winning tournaments or watching Twitch streams. You can get sometimes up to 10 packs a day just from watching OOTP Twitch streams. Five from affiliates like myself, Dr. Dynastic, Gorgo, EVC, The Commish, Tessuigi, Nersha Banko, Yuka Karazami, uh, Your Kidneys, The Durdens, Extorforas. Um, sorry if I missed anyone. But yeah, you can earn five packs a day from watching an affiliate. And then you can earn five packs tonight. Tune in to TJ Lowerman, 9 p.m. Eastern on the official OOTP channel, and you can get another five packs. When Rich comes on Saturday or Sunday and Monday nights, you can get five packs from him. When Dish comes on Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening, get five packs. Fridays during the showdown tournament, when Dish comes on, get five packs. So by watching a lot of Twitch streams, you can really start to build up your pack collection here. And we will open packs a little bit later. All right. Good to see you all here, guys. And uh, may you comment on packs real quick? Absolutely. <laughs> and Steve, <laughs> I'm telling you, Steve, this is a grind. This is definitely a grind. You know what that grind is like as well. And uh, like I said, there's just not enough time in the day. So come on, OOTP. There's the black screen and there is the crash. We've got the OOTP crash. Doesn't happen all the time. It's been better with OOTP 24, but let me get this booted up again real quick. And yeah, Kamish, feel free. Talk about the packs. Comment about the packs. Like I said, you can get them from many different sources, including at the end of my stream, I'll be giving away 15 packs. All right, let's put this in. Yeah, if you ever try to expand your screen, a lot of times it will crash on you when you make OOTP bigger or smaller as it's opened up. You get that black screen of death, kind of like the Xbox red ring of death. All right, let me get this back and this back and present. There we go. Yeah, we all have our we all have our glitches, right? EVC for EVC, it's when he clicks on packs. For me, it's when I try and expand my screen. Not going to expand it right now. So I'm going to go into uh, one of my bronze tournaments and just kind of show you what team I'm running with that's been pretty successful. So I'm going to go into a past one and we'll pick a recent one. Sometimes I crash here too. And I don't know if you guys are able to see this on your tournaments, your 
previous tournaments, but I never get my results. I just show it as being finished. I don't know if that is a glitch or if it's a setting in the game, but I see some of you when you post screenshots, it says winner or it says second place. Mine just says finished. All right, let me go and find a recent tournament. We'll go 299. 299. These fill up real quick, guys. If you don't play bronze tournaments, maybe you want to try starting them. They they generate really quickly. They play out really quickly. Within half an hour, 45 minutes, the tournament is over or close to being over. But you kind of need the right roster. Any roster can win at any time in this game. But you can become, you can craft a really good roster over time if you have the cards and if you have a little bit of perfect points to buy some of the cards. All right, so let's click on the results here. How did I do? How did I do? Whoa, look at that. So Gorgo said that he's won a few tournaments uh, recently. The Rocky Mountain Gladiators. I think this is the first time I've gone undefeated in a tournament. And uh, the Wood Ducks met me in the final. So if you want to get involved in bronze tournament to all the new players out there, highly recommended. They're free. You don't have to pay anything. All you have to do is assemble a team of cards that are bronze, 69, or lower. It can be anything from 40 to 69 to assemble your team. These are double elimination. So everyone starts off on the very far left-hand side. When you lose a game, you move to the right side of the bracket. And if you lose a second game, you're out of the tournament. Good news is you get to enter another one. As soon as you're eliminated, you do not have to wait until the tournament is over. You can enter another tournament once you're eliminated. And <clears throat> yeah, B Mall are 47 tourney wins, but you enter so many all day long. It is a grind. It really is. You just constantly, and then you leave the room and you see that two teams have been eliminated and you enter and enter and enter. And eventually you'll have some success and you'll win some of them. But it, you have to put the sweat, uh, the blood, sweat, and tears into it to uh, become successful. I do not think there's anyone out there that wins every tournament they're in. In fact, I know that. It's impossible because of the random generated aspect of the game. So the Gladiators, uh, they went on a streak here. You can look at the tournament coverage in each round. 10 to 1, I beat them all rats. Round two, beat the Fighting Lions six to four. Quarterfinals, I beat the Wood Ducks six to five. Semis, beat Colorado Tommy Knockers five to two. And then I met back up with the Wood Ducks. So when I beat the Wood Ducks the first time, it was their first loss. They went over to the right hand bracket. They won two games, which put them in the finals. So yes, double elimination for the bronze tournaments. All right, let's take a look at who I'm running here. One thing I recommend is enter a few tournaments, just whatever, use any cards. Just use any cards that are eligible and enter a couple tournaments. Then go back in once it's over and analyze a little bit of the data. Some people will download the data and put them in spreadsheets and Although these tournaments are so short, I don't know if that data would be viable. You would need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games to get accurate data. I go by the feel of it. I go by intuition and how players have done in the tournament. So I look at the leaderboards and I go, okay, Dave Kingman. Dave Kingman looks pretty good. Slugging percentage. Joey Gallo. Gallo's up here a couple times. Woody Held, Gorman Thomas, I see, Chris Davis. So if you open up three or four or five tournaments that you play in, look at the pitchers, look at the hitters, see which ones have done well, 
see who the common names are, and uh, see if you can get them on the card shop. So you go to the card shop and you say, hey, Paul Molitor looks like a stud in these tournaments. Oh, he's 176 points. Fairly reasonable. You go and buy them and you stick them on your tournament team. Right now for my hitters, this is the hitting team that won this tournament here. I got Brian Downing and Ernie Witt as my two catchers. Ernie Witt, I think, is a meta bronze catcher. He's a catcher a lot of people use in these tournaments. And right now on the card shop, you can get him for 110 perfect points. That is a good deal. So I highly recommend you get Ernie Witt for a catcher. First base, I'm using Joey Gallo. Uh, Joey Gallo hit 261 in this tournament. I like power and eye, like a lot of people do. I'm not the first to say that. I won't be the last to say that. Many of the really good modelers out there, many of the good tournament players like power and eye. And Joey Gallo, let me tell you, he's got power and eye. That's for sure. Thank you, uh, Brew Hendon, for the follow. And Mr. another French name, Mr. Bienvenue. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Sounds like a French name there. So thank you for the follow. And um, Joey Gallo, I recommend that you get on the card shop. You can pick him up for, eh, well, he's not listed right now because he's probably pretty popular. But about 120. So no one is currently looking to buy or sell Joey Gallo. That's that's strange for a bronze card. You can also toggle off cards that you own. If you own a card, it'll be in green. If you don't want to rebuy it by accident, just click hide cards that I own. Really good feature to the card shop. Next up on this winning team from this tournament, I've got Mark DeRosa. I like a little bit of defense for my infielders, my second baseman, my shortstop, but you, you don't want to neglect the bat as well. So you got to look for that player that kind of has the balance. And Mark DeRosa hit 280 in this tournament for me. So I go to the card shop and he currently is selling for 298. So a little bit more expensive. And don't be afraid to put in buy orders. If you're patient, don't just buy the highest priced one. Go in and put a buy order in of 199 or 225. And chances are within a day, if you have a fair buy order, someone will sell you that card for that price. So yeah, you can put in buy orders for cards that you're looking for. I've got Ryan Schimpf as my backup second baseman. So Ryan Schimpf didn't get in many games, only got in two games, hit 500. But again, he's got the eye and power. I and power, and he's got reasonable defense, especially as a backup. Dave Kingman is a meta iron. Just because it's a bronze tournament doesn't mean you need to play bronze cards. You can play iron cards. Look at that power and I. First base, third base, DH. He's got some speed. So I use him at third base typically. And, um, He's hit and miss. This tournament here, he only hit 143. Horrible. This was a horrible tournament for Dave Kingman. But there will be tournaments where he hits a lot higher. So if I go to my leaderboard here and I find another Dave Kingman, so the Fighting Lions have a Dave Kingman and he hit 286 with two home runs in three games. So there was a very effective Dave Kingman. So cards are going to be inconsistent, but you want to look at their performance over a period of 20, 30, 40, 50 games to get a good feel for them. Just because they have one bad tournament doesn't make them a bad card. If they have 10 bad tournaments, yeah, you might want to take them out of the lineup. Uh, next I have Woody Held. Great shortstop. I always look for defense and shortstop. I'm always 
willing to sacrifice in tournaments anyway. In tournaments, I'll sacrifice the bat for the defense. And this is one of the, if not the best shortstops for a bronze tournament. 97 range. Always ignore ignore the top number, you know, the 95. Look at the defensive ratings underneath, especially the range for outfielders and infielders. That's a key number. If they've got a 40 range, you don't want to use them. He's going to commit a lot of errors or not complete double plays if he's got low double plays. High range, the most important thing of those four characteristics, in my opinion. Herman Long, here's my other shortstop, 97 range. Didn't play in the tournament, but capable backup if he needs to go in. Uh, Paul Molitor, I have on the team. Paul Molitor, I've had success with him. Here's a case of not a lot of power or eye, but his BABIP is pretty high. So you can see he's hit a lot of singles and doubles. Look at that. He has a five-game hitting streak. He hit 375 in the tournament. So I don't go for a full lineup of power and eye. Maybe two-thirds or maybe 60% power eye. And then I like to have some contact guys. Just not the big sluggers. You want guys that can get on base. And his defense is okay. Not the best, but it's okay. So Paul Molitor is a guy that I like to use on my team. Chris Davis, a great card last year in OOTP 23, and I've had success with him too. He's got the power. He's got the eye. He hit 381 in this tournament. He's okay in left field. You can use him as a DH. And uh, yeah, another, another good card. Kurt Gibson, a lot of teams use Kurt Gibson. He's a backup for me. Doesn't have really any batting stats. He didn't get in many playing situations. Fielder Jones, if you want defense for a center fielder, look at that blue, 104 for his outfield range. Outfield range, more important than the other two. New players, you want range. Eyes really good. Power's not the greatest. Again, he's not my starter, but good in a defensive situation. One of the top three cards in bronze tournaments, you have to have this guy. If you want success, you got to get Gorman Thomas. And Gorman Thomas is on the card shop for 200 points. His, his price has come down quite a bit. It used to be 2,000 when the game came out. So get yourself a Gorman Thomas. And you can use him in the outfield, but I don't recommend it. Center field's not his greatest position better as a DH. So Gorman Thomas, I've got him in center field, but like I said, DH works probably even better. Rob Deere, one of my favorite cards from last year. Rob Deere, look at that eye, look at that power. He's a backup for me. He can play first base, left field, right field. I highly recommend you get Rob Deere. And Jimmy Wynn, Jimmy Wynn, power, I, pretty good defense. Only hit 188, but again, it's one tournament. So there is the uh, lineup and a little bit of the strategy that I use for my hitters. Um, I've got Paul Molitor at DH, and I've got Dave Kingman at third base. Pitching-wise, Here's where I might make a change. Look at this. I went the full distance in the tournament. I went right to the finals. And my number four and five pitcher did not play any game action. None. Not one third of an inning. They didn't start a game. They weren't needed. Because I have it on always start highest rested. I recommend you go with that setting. Always start highest rested. So by the time it got down to them to pitch, Carl Lundgren was rested up. He was ready to go. So that's where maybe you're wasting some opportunity. If they're good pitchers, 
you might want to go to a four-man rotation and use Bob Gibson in a middle relief role. That way he'll get some game action. So I might have to go down to a four-man rotation. If I look at all the other teams here quickly, five-man rotation, they were knocked out early. Colorado, five-man rotation, but look at their number five guy. He didn't pitch at all, so it was a wasted wasted spot for Alex Cobb. Connecticut, again, knocked out early. The Dark Web Hackers, knocked out early. The Durham Bulls, number five guy, didn't get a chance to pitch. So maybe a, a four-man rotation might be a little bit better because I have not come across any team where pitcher number five has pitched yet. Justin Thompson didn't pitch. Uh, the returners, same thing. Pacific Rain, nope. Springfield, how about you? Well, they've got a four-man rotation. Here's our first team with a four-man rotation, and all four pitchers did see some game action. Vancouver, didn't pitch, and Washington, same thing. So that's why I'm thinking I probably will go down to a four-man rotation and use that extra guy in the bullpen. But right now I've got Carl Lundgren, great, great iron pitcher. Don't let the control fool you. I like to look at the home run and BABIP, pitcher BABIP. To me, I think it's important, but again, I'm not an expert. I might be wrong. Uh, Other people may think that this isn't important. I ignore movement, and I look at these two right here and kind of take a peek at stuff. You don't want weak stuff and weak control. Mind you, if the stuff was really weak, this would probably be weaker too. So Carl Lundgren is a pitcher that uh, sometimes you can't find him on the card shop. Right now he is 175. Go get him. Go get Carl Lundgren. I want to see someone buy Carl Lundgren and fulfill this buy order here or sell order. 175. Really good deal for your number one pitcher on your bronze tournaments. I'm watching. I'm watching. Does it sell? There it is. Now the lowest price is 333. So someone did go buy that Carl Lundgren. Lefty. LaField, love that name. Lefty LaField. He's popular. He's not on the card shop. No one's listing him. A couple people want to buy him. I like him in my lineup, that's for sure. Another good bronze card is this one here. Fred BB. None listed right now. Might be a popular card. But yeah, I would try and get him in your lineup. And my number four guy is Mr. Turley. Again, not very good control, but got pretty good Babbitt. He's my number four guy. So if he doesn't pitch, I'm okay with that. I'm not completely sold on his statistics. So I've got him as the, the lowest part of my rotation. In the bullpen, get yourself a louder milk. Great, great guy to have in the bullpen. You might even want to start him. I don't start him because I don't like that low control. I'd rather have him in the bullpen. But you can find him in the card shop for 149, now 150 points. Again, new buy order. A couple people looking for him. I find this comical. Someone's willing to pay 149. Someone's willing to sell him for 150. Just, Just buy him. Buy him for 150. (laughs) It's one perfect point off. Yeah, so that one is available. Also in the bullpen, who else do we got? Uh, Crap. Look at that low control. There's, there's, There's some common features with these successful pitchers. One of them is low control. So I like him. He only pitched in one game, gave up one hit. Find him in the card shop for 198. Some people use him as a starter. But notice that 
no live players, no live cards, historical cards. In your bronze tournaments, you want to go with the historical cards. Weldon Wyckoff. Another guy I use, really good in terms of not giving up home runs, at least on paper. And in the card shop, he's expensive. This is one guy that uh, you'd have to pay up for. His value has stayed pretty high. And there's only one listed right now. So if you have the perfect points, you might want to pick him up because often I don't see him listed on the card shop. And then a few others as well. Danny Cox, I like. Wilbur Wood, this Joe, uh, 61 bronze. I like him as well. Now keep in mind, there are going to be tournaments where these guys have a 7 ERA. But on the whole, consistently playing them, they've worked for me. We go to the leaderboard. And we look at the pitching leaders from the whole tournament, which again is a very small sample size. And you see some of those names, Lundgren, uh, Baby. We see Cox up here. We see um, another one that, you know, might be popular, this guy here. Antonelli looks like he might be a decent choice. So you can get him in the card shop. Well, you can't because none are listed right now, but he's going for about 140. He would probably be one of the guys I would pick up if I see one of these other pitchers having a hard time. I would probably pick up Antoninelli. So there you go. Let me check the chat. Haven't checked the chat uh, recently here. Gorgo says he plays a, a four-man. Oh, yeah, two different Gallo cards. Yes. I like this Gallo better. Where is he? Where is he? Uh, Gallo. So I use the 66. Uh, I, I even didn't realize there were two different Gallos. So if we go to the card shop and at Gallo. So there's the live Gallo, who again has really good power. And really good eye. 109 versus 95. And this gallo here, 110, 107. So it's a little bit higher on this card. Plus, his defense, especially at first base, I think is a little bit better. So, yeah, you can try them both out. But again, I've always been a fan of the historical cards for, for long term, anyway. Uh, what else? Um, starter number five comes into play if you lose in the first, second, or third round, and then you make it to the finals. Okay. So because you get rest, if you advance, because I won my first game, I don't play my second game until two days later because the first game gets played here, and then you get a buy because you're waiting to see who advances over here. They kind of have to play off against each other. The losers have to play off against each other. So you may get the odd buy, and when you get those buys, those days off, your pitchers rest. So you can keep using pitchers one, two, and three. So I went the full distance, one, two, three, four. I only played six games, but only three of my guys pitched because they had those off days of rest. I didn't use need to use number four or five. So what was mentioned in the chat is if you lose game one, two, or three, if you lose first round, second round, or third round, that pitcher number five might come into play. Okay. Thanks, Bailey, for that. <laughs> Market manipulation. Yeah, the good cards tend to go for a little bit more. So Gorgo started with the 65 and went to the 66. I think that's exactly what I did too because I didn't realize there was a historical gallo. So I flipped over to him. The Hoosman also likes the 65 because of the versatility. Yes, good point. Gallo, um, let's go back there. The historical gallo can play first, third, or left field. 
the live gallo first left center or right field. And and the ratings are pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. So if you want to give up a little bit in the ratings for a little bit more versatile versatility, definitely can do that. So again, as a new player, get involved in tournaments. Get involved in the iron or in the bronze. Uh, bronze are probably better because they fire off a lot quicker. You can enter more of them, but you have to wait. You can only enter one at a time. And they're often full, like this one is here. So you might have to wait another minute until it regenerates another bronze. I like to go to the bronze-specific ones. And then enter, and then enter. And go to your tournament tab and pick one or two just to look at the results. You just randomly pick another one. And see again on the leaderboards, which players have done well, which have not done so well. Are any of you that are playing bronze tournaments, are any of you using... Um, that LE card. Who was that LE card? Rhodes. So I do own a Carl Rhodes. Um, I don't know if he was in my lineup or not. He's expensive. New players, here's where you're paying a premium because there's only a hundred of these cards out there. And someone's willing to pay 3700 for him. He's bronze, so he would qualify for the bronze tournament. But I'm just curious if any of you guys are having success with this limited edition card. I mean, his stats are okay, but they're not overwhelming. Not to pay 7000 for. He can only play a couple positions. Base running is good, but speed and stealing is not that great. So the Chicago Cubs limited edition Carl Rhodes. Wondering if anyone's having success. So let's go to the leaderboard. Look, we got Gorman Thomas. Five home runs. Get that card if you don't have Gorman Thomas. Uh, Davey Lopes. Power, I. So he would fit kind of the two things that I look for, power and I. He only hit 214, but he had four home runs. Uh, in terms of pitching leaders, the top strikeout guy was that Antonelli guy that I said I would consider getting. I might add him to my team. Looks pretty good. Uh, who else do we got? Uh, War. Where's the pitcher War here? Um, right here. Antonelli was war leader too. So go get him. He'd, he'd be great to add to your bullpen or starter. Uh, for myself, how did I do in this tournament here? Let's go look at the tree here. Oh, Gorgo. <laughs> wow. This was not planned at all. I just randomly picked one. And Gorgo earlier was talking about winning tournaments. Here we go. Uh, where's my team? My team should be somewhere on here. Don't know where it is. Rocky Mountain. They, oh, there it is. So they won the first game, lost the second to the Stack o Cakes, moved over here, won a game, and then uh, they lost. They lost in the quarterfinals. So I didn't even get to go up against the Finneytown Flames. So congratulations. There is a Gorgo win. We have proof. Uh, my pitchers, number five guy didn't get a chance to pitch. My number four guy, I wish he didn't get a chance to pitch. 20.25 ERA. But you're going to get that in, in these tournaments. Don't come back and say, Lap, I went in three tournaments with guys that you suggested and I didn't win any packs. Welcome to the club. If you can win packs, one out of every... Eight tournaments, seven tournaments, I'd say you're doing good. All right, let's check out the chat here. Yeah, absolutely, is prices based on uh, scarcity for that uh, Rhodes card. Yep, only 100 of them. So if you like to collect the unique cards, 
might want to get him. And uh, Leona the Yordle. Welcome to the chat here, Leona. Rhodes doesn't really seem to do anything particularly well. Yeah, it's kind of my impression too. I mean, might be good as a utility guy, a backup guy, but not one you want to pay up for. That 90s guy covers. Welcome. I'm still learning the ropes of what actually has an effect in tournament. Again, in a nutshell, I like the home run and BABIP as best as you can to be as high as you can. I don't care about the control. And for hitters, I like power and eye. For me, that's what I look for. And again, it's it's done pretty well. I I don't have the, you know, the success of the Gorgo packs, but I've won won a few along the way. But you have to you have to keep spamming them. You have to keep entering them. So when you enter a tournament, as it loads up here, let's see if it's full again. Nope. I can sign in. There we go. For any of you guys in 588. Doesn't look like I see any familiar names. But for the new players, once you set up your bronze team, make sure you export your team so that if something messes up along the way, you don't have to re-input everything again. It's really easy to do. It takes takes 15 seconds to do that. 90% of the time, you'll get this message. The default roster has been imported automatically. So I don't have to do anything. I can just click enter the tournament and my team of 26 players should automatically come into play. My lineups should automatically be the same. My pitchers, the same. But you have to make sure you go to that bottom set of arrows down there on the right-hand side, go to Roster Export, and then call it something. You know, maybe call it Bronze April the 4th, and you save it. And that way, if your roster ever messes up and you come to your page and no players are over here, just go up to Roster Import, and yeah, I've got a lot saved and click on the one that you want to import and it'll bring those players back over one word of caution and this is something i wish ootp would fix in a future uh in future gameplay is the ability to lock players in if i accidentally sold gene crap if i sold him he's not going to show up on my tournament roster anymore so be careful when you're selling off your cards that you're not selling off the card that was part of your roster. If I have four of these cards here, I have to make sure I don't sell my live, my active card. And again, really easy to do. You go down here, you go to manage cards, go up to other, select duplicates. That'll show all your duplicate cards that you have for bronze and for iron, the eligible cards. You can sell off the inactive ones. That's fine. But if it says active, which I don't have any right now. So if it says reserve or if it says active, you, you don't want to sell that one because that that's probably the one that's on your team. So be careful when you sell off cards. Same with live cards. Every month they recalibrate the live rating. And if you had a bronze 68 Verlander and he went up to a 70, he's no longer eligible for the team because he's a 70 now, not a bronze. So he would be taken off your roster. So at the beginning of every month, if you have live players, always go back and check. Otherwise, you can just spam tournaments one after the other and hope you get those packs.
CA 93, one thing on Braun's turn is pitching home run and pitcher Babbitt are both really important, but a low pitcher home run is devastating. Yes. And that's because a lot of teams use power and eye guys, right? As batters. So if you have all these Dave Kingmans and Joey Gallows and high power guys and a low home run pitcher, they're going to knock them out of the park on them. That's why you need those pitchers with high home run to kind of combat the Dave Kingmans, the Joey Gallows. Yeah, very good point. If you do it on your main, that active or reserve status just isn't there. Thanks for that, Gorgo. And New Zealand breaks. Yeah, I only sell Duke bronze cards from inside the tournament itself. Very good. That's why I wish New Zealand that uh, they would have a little lock on it. So I could go to my bronze tournament and just lock all 26 cards so that I don't accidentally sell it. Hopefully we're going to see that feature sometime. All right. Thanks again for everyone for being here. A couple more shout outs. Sporer. I don't know if it's the Sporer, but Sporer, thank you so much. Not only for following today, but also for the uh, Saturday April Fool's content release. My birthday it was a pleasure. It was a nice birthday present to see the comical release of all those cards. I saw it posted in the Discord forum. They're giving me an opportunity to release my own set of cards. And I thought, good one, Sporer. April Fools. I know about April Fools. You just want everyone to click on the link to go to your channel and you're going to say, April Fools, there are no cards. <laughs> but I was surprised. I clicked on it and I saw that you were actually releasing a Randy Johnson, um, Pete Rose, I um, can't remember the other ones, but unique players that played on different teams. The only one you missed, the only one you missed, Spur, was Dave Steeb pitching one year with the Chicago White Sox. I'm a big Dave Steeb fan. I know you are too. And that would have been cool to have Dave Steeb as his 38-year-old or 36-year-old Chicago White Sox card. Not that I would have used it. Uh, you're doing INJ588. INJ588. Oh, okay. So we are both in the same bronze tournament there. All right. We'll keep an eye on that, Gorgo. I don't think it started yet. And let's spam another one. Also, too, if you accidentally enter the wrong tournament, you're not stuck there. I've seen this question before. If I accidentally enter the wrong one, so let's go and do that. Let's go to all tournaments. And I'm going to sign up for this one here. Entry fee, 1,000 perfect points. Oh, no. Oh, I accidentally entered the wrong tournament. Well, pretty easy. Go over to the green section here. Click on the little plus sign and click withdraw. There you go. Takes you out of the tournament. Very simple to do, but something I didn't know about last year. And I thought, oh, I'm stuck in this tournament. Got to wait till it finishes. And then I found out you can withdraw pretty easy. As long as you do it before it fills up. All right, let's enter one more here. We're already entered. Good. All right, one more thing we're going to do before we do our draw for the 15 free packs that I'm going to give away today. Hopefully, you'll get a good card in it. Let's go through, and we looked at bronze tournaments. Some people have a lot of difficulty with the perfect drafts, myself included. I've won a couple. I've got a couple low-level choice packs, but I still struggle with the tournaments. Hey, CA93, a new card. All right, we got breaking news. Stop stop cuddling your rat and pay attention because we got some breaking news here. Let me go back to my main screen and check it out. Go to the OOTP Perfect Team Twitter and refresh. 
Oh, look at that. Speaking of bronze tournaments, we've got a 63 starter, Dennis Eckersley. And the beautiful, love the card art for the limited editions. Well done, OOTP. Very good stuff. Okay. So thank you, CA93, for that. And I'm sure everyone's going to the card shop now, seeing if they can uh, seeing if they can get that. All right. Let's go back here. Okay, you, let's go. In fact, let's let's not do the draft because I'm almost out of time here. I want to raid into uh, the doctor soon. Thanks for for everyone that has uh, followed. But let's go. And hey, there it is. It just popped up. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull one of those Eckersley because they're going to go quick because it's a bronze card. Bronze cards that are limited edition usually kind of sell out within two or three days. Uh, just like the Rhodes card did. If it's a perfect card or diamond card, they tend to last longer. So let's first of all go and look at that Eckersley because he should be in the card shop. Dennis Eckersley, 63. Babbitt's good, but I would not recommend this in uh, the bronze tournaments because his home run is low. So you're Dave Kingman, you're Joey Gallo, you're Chris Davis. They're going to rock him, in my opinion. So, yeah, I would not pay up for him. Uh, people are willing to pay $7,500. I don't think he's going to do well in these bronze tournaments. But I could be wrong. Be fun to see. So let's see. Let's see if I can pull one of those Dennis Eckersley. If you guys have been here before, when I open packs, let's get the emotes going. Let's get the dogs going, barking. Who let the dogs out? Let's open up about 20 packs and search for a low edition Dennis Eckersley. All right, Edgar Renteria. Low power, low eye. Don't think I'd use him on the bronze team. Granny Hammer, really good defense typically, yeah. I could see some people using Granny on their bronze tournament team. And we've got a gold card along with Zane Smith, Willie Mo Pena. We've got Louis Erez. And I'm keeping him. I'm going to keep him and speculate that he goes up to Diamond. There's probably lot, not a lot of room movement or room for movement on his stats. But if you pull Louie, keep him for a month. Because if he goes up to Diamond, he's automatically worth 4000 compared to 1000 And you're allowed to keep 10 of any one card, unless you keep opening them up. Greg Jeffries, another gold. Who do we got? We've got Ryan Duran. Let's talk about uh, statistics on a card. Closer with 163 stuff. Oh, 163 stuff, 81 movement. Got to check out his, uh, his BABIP and home run. Because that looks like a playable card in the bullpen. Wow. Oh, EVC, you've got him on your card. Ooh, or got him on your team, on your main team. And he plays well. Good to know. All right. Let's see if we can get that Dennis Eckersley. Gold card number three. We've got Blake Snell. San Diego pitcher. Again, you can speculate and you can keep your golds hoping they go up to diamond. Because that's a big boost. That's how a lot of managers make their bank on perfect points is by keeping cards and selling them when they move up to diamond or perfect. All right, so we'll open a few more packs here and then we'll do our giveaway gold card. We've got Jose De Leon. 
Another one, EVC, do you use him? Because look at that stuff and movement. 113 stuff, 98 movement. Looks like another card that you can use in your bullpen, maybe even as a starter. Jose De Leon, another great card you use. Well, I'm glad I'm pulling in some of these good pitchers because they're going to go up to Rocky Mountain very soon here. I like it. I like getting two quality pitchers in the gold historicals. Nice. And another gold. Not hitting any diamonds, but we are hitting the gold cards. And it is. Here's a case where because he's 81, he's worth 1,000 perfect points while 1,380 perfect points. But if he drops down to a silver, he'll only be worth a couple hundred. So sometimes, you know, he, to go up to a diamond, he's got a long way to go. Sometimes you sell him and take the perfect points before the end of the month. I'll keep them for now. Right, Adam Jones. Plus, we know there's going to be more missions coming out and missions for silver cards, historical cards. So don't don't get you know too desperate in selling your cards just yet. That window of opportunity of selling lives has kind of closed. The the high the high values of live cards for many of them have really dropped down, especially for a lot of the silvers. All right, we're going to go till we get one more premium card, one more gold or one more diamond. Derek Jeter. Another bronze card. Jose Vidro. I see some people using him in bronze tournaments. John Smoltz, I believe this was one of the, was this one of the uh, Sporer cards, the John Smoltz one? Got a pretty, yeah, there he is, April Fool's Day, yeah. John Smoltz as a St. Louis Cardinal. And Troy O'Leary. Here we go, gold card number six. We have a... Andrew Heaney, another one that's a low gold. If he goes down to silver, you'll lose some value. Paul Molitor, this is a card that uh, I use on my gold or on my bronze team. I'm going to give you guys a deal. If you want Paul Molitor in your lineup, give for uh, one, give him for level 10, last 10, 188 for Paul Molitor on the card shop. And another gold. And Gunnar Henderson. This is a card I think could go up to diamond. If you're speculating on gold cards, Gunnar Henderson has got potential. I'm going to hang on to Gunnar. All the Gunners I get. Mark Lee. And we'll go three more packs, two more packs. And the last pack today is nothing, nothing to write home about there. But did definitely pick up a couple of really good gold cards. Paul Molitor sold. Thank you, forever who bought that Paul Molitor. And let's go back to the main screen. So there you go, just announced Dennis Eckersley, 63 bronze reliever starter, is in card packs as we speak. If you're a Boston Red Sox fan, you probably want to get your hold, uh, your hands on that one. Well, guys, we are going to raid over to the doctor in just a couple minutes here. Thank you for tuning in to episode number 84. Got the OOTP blues with not enough time in the day. Because, yeah, I need more OOTP time. But let's get on to our giveaway here. Let me mark that as complete. Thank 
Yes. I was talking about that earlier that uh, I thought your uh, I thought that you were going to post it. Come watch me. I've got my own new content. <laughs> and then we'd all go over there and there'd be nothing or you'd be playing MLB the show <laughs> with those cards. <laughs> but it was nice. It was nice to uh, see an April Fool's Day set. Wonderful job on that Sporer. Um, we all got a kick out of it. You know, the Randy Johnson, the Smoltz. But like I said earlier, you had a Pete Rose Expo, which was very cool, but you needed a Dave Steeb Chicago White Sox. The only team he played outside of Toronto on was for Chicago late in his career. And just for one season. Would have been cool to have that Dave, maybe for a future April Fool's Day rendition. All right, let's see if we can get this giveaway going. If Stream Elements is participating, here we go, guys. Exclamation ticket, exclamation enter. We'll get you into the contest. And yes, we are up and running. As I always do, my outro screen, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you for all the new follows. Thank you, B. Mahler, for the sub on today's episode and uh, all the fun we had talking about the days that we need to celebrate. It is International Carrot Day. Go munch on your carrot. Go cuddle your rat because it's International World Rat Day. National Vitamin C Day. And... National Walk Around Things Day. So I don't want you to get injured. Take this day in as serious as you can. Careful with those sharp corner desks, the slippery floors, the tigers that might be in your way. Walk around them because it's International Walk Around Day. And again, Gordo's cooking fried chicken tonight, but the chicken cordon bleu is what everyone should be geared towards today. And I will be heading to Crumble to get into the long lines for my $5 cookie that I'm sure is just so delicious. You guys... I've said they're pretty good. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the thickness of that cookie. Look at those hockey pucks. In Canada, we like our hockey. All right, one more minute, guys. Get your entries in. Exclamation ticket, exclamation enter. We'll give you one more minute to get in there. It is. It is a great day for baseball. Mr. Ree. Is it another great day for baseball today? It really is. Got to have the lap point. Every episode, we need a lap point. Come on, 62 of you are entered. It should be, we've got over 250, 60, 70, 90 watching. Let's get those numbers up. Exclamation ticket, exclamation enter. As always, be kind to yourself, be kind to all of those around you, especially in these difficult financial, political, uh, climate times. If you're on in the Midwest, I hope you're safe today. I know there's some nasty weather going through. Uh, if you're in a tornado area or in a severe thunderstorm area, Check on your neighbors, check on the elderly, make sure they're doing okay and safe. Thank you guys again for tuning in to episode number 84. Thank you guys for tuning in. Laptop Hound signing out of the studios today. We'll see you Thursday with Hawk episode number two. Tune in right after Dishnet at noon. Tune in for some card evaluation on Thursday. Thanks guys. Have a wonderful day, wonderful evening. We'll see you next episode.